Hi there, welcome to this week's episode of the Heart of a Youth Leader podcast. My name is Andy Castle, founder and leader of Thrive Youth Ministries in the Midlands. Wonder whether you ever get that feeling when you just feel like you don't know what to do and you start getting flustered because things aren't going your way or the young people are incredibly irritable for no reason or they leave after youth group and they've left a mess and you're like, what am I doing? This isn't what I signed up for. This isn't how it should be. Uh, uh, People don't seem to be really engaging. It doesn't feel like it's working feels like no one really cares what you're doing and it's like no one's even noticing and you start to have a pity party and you're going, what am I doing? How Should I be giving up? Should I be stopping? I think those are feelings that anyone who's been in youth work for more than a couple of weeks has probably felt because it is a, a tough ministry to be in. It is a, a ministry which is notoriously bad at uh, being appreciated by others because so much of what we do is unseen by most people uh, in our churches and unfortunately teenagers are just not great at saying thank you uh, and showing their love and appreciation which is why whenever they do show their appreciation it's like whoa and I still have cards going back like 20 probably 25 years from uh, times when young people have sent me a card to say thank you for what you do I really appreciate it because they're such treasures because they don't come very often. Uh, but I want to encourage you to keep on going. Uh, and when, when, when things don't seem to be going right, when things don't seem to be uh, going uh, the way you intended or planned or you thought God planned, then what do you do? Uh, and I want to encourage us by looking at the story of Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt. Uh, And when they have the amazing plagues that really show God's power and authority that Pharaoh eventually lets the Israelites go. But then he immediately regrets it because the Lord hardens his heart once again. Uh, And so he sends his army after the Israelites. And the Israelites are are, are making their way out following uh, the the, uh, pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. What an incredible... um, Uh, clear picture to follow uh, that God gave the Israelites and yet the Israelites uh, get to the edge of the Red Sea and they're like what have we done Uh, and it picks that up in Genesis chapter 14 Uh, verse 10 as Pharaoh approached the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them they were terrified and cried out to the Lord the Israelites said to Moses Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. And it's like, you can really hear their fear, can't you? It's like, what on earth have you done, Moses? At least in Egypt, we knew what the school was. At least we, we, we were still alive. It was horrendous but maybe it wasn't quite as bad as this uh, and how quickly we forget how, how horrendous sometimes life can be. Uh, and yet they're fearing for their lives because they're like, there's no way out. There's the sea behind us and here come the Egyptian army. We are surely going to die. Uh, and yet Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. What incredible faith of Moses. He's like, well, I know the Lord's led us here, so what are we worried about? Oh, to have a heart like that. Oh, to have that confidence that, well, if the Lord's led me here, he's got a way out. Uh, And that wonderful, wonderful verse that he says, the Lord will fight for you, we need only to be still. And that's so often what we need to do when we're getting flustered, when we're getting overworked, overstretched, we're getting exhausted, we need to remind ourselves that the Lord will fight for us. We just need to be still. We just need to sit in his presence. We just need to remind ourselves we aren't in charge. We're not the one this all depends on, it's him. And to come to him and to let his Holy Spirit revitalize us, speak to us, 
and to show us what he wants us to do next. And it's only when the Israelites stop, stop complaining, stop worrying, stop having a hissy fit, that they hear the Lord's response. And I love it. Moses has said, come on, the Lord's going to fight for us. Let's just wait. Let's be still. And immediately in the next verse, we read that the Lord then says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. It's like God's going, I don't know what you're waiting for me for. You know what to do. Put your hand in the air, Moses, and let's get this miracle happening. Uh, and did, he, did God need Moses to do the miracle that parts the Red Sea? No. But he chose to partner with Moses and the way he chooses to partner with us to build his kingdom. Does he need us? No. Do we need him? Absolutely. We can't do anything without him. And yet for some reason he chooses not to do anything without us. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a blessing. What a typical perfect father who loves to do things with his kids. So we need to take time. We need to still ourselves to remind ourselves it's not about us. We need to get our ego in check. We need to calm down and we need to focus on him and then do whatever he tells us to do. Because he won't do it for us. He'll do it with us by his Holy Spirit filled in us. So be obedient to whatever you think he says. Can you imagine Moses? He's been told, just lift your hands up over the water. And Moses is like, oh, how's that going to make a difference? Except Moses has had the track record. Moses has had the track record with his staff and seeing the miracles that have happened already when he just does whatever God asks him to do. We don't need to understand it. We don't need to uh, process it as if to make, does it make sense or not? We just need to be obedient. So if you're feeling flustered, if you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling stretched, the Lord fights for you. You need only to be still and then do whatever he tells you to do. Go for it.